Hugh, to come on up here and kind of tell you about our special guest today because we've got a, we're doing something different today. We are. We're doing something different today. And of course, well. today is a tongue twister kind of day in terms of his occupation, what he's going to do for us, to say nothing of his last thing. So, I'm going to introduce Mark. And Mark, would you please state in one word exactly what your occupation is? I'm a therapist. See why I couldn't remember how to pronounce it? Now, now, all right, and Mark, what is your last name? Sure, I'm sexy. See? I mean, did you catch that? He sure is sexy. It is. It is. Actually, it's chesty, but there's seasons easy to do all the time, so they're not going to look different anyway. I can say what I want. Yes, and he's not bad to look at either, ladies. They're kind of easy on the eyes. So, anyway, anyway we've, got, we've really got a fun, fun uh, presentation for you. He's going to uh, interview me. I've, I've agreed to be the subject, and he's going to interview me while he's drawing. You're going to be able to see what he does up on the screen uh, while he sits here at this particular table, and he's going to be questioning me. Now, the purpose of what he draws is to help draw out, oh, if somebody's hurting, aching, or if they're happy. He's hired by many major corporations as a feature because he uplifts the audiences, and people love his character work. So today, we're going to let Mark do what he does best, and help to inspire one and all. So, Mark, why don't we take it away? Thank you. Right. So, before we begin, I'll give some background on me. I am Mark Zermichessi. I do call myself a caricaturist. It is the best way to describe what it is that I do. Um, when I draw, it's there as, as part entertainer, part artist, part talk show host, Part therapist, part vision coach, and comedian. So they're all in one picture. And what I really like to do is get to the truth of what is about inside of somebody. So I like to ask what it is they would want to be if they felt free. And I draw from that place. And so my job actually celebrates people. I'm not looking to learn from their features or anything else like that. I want a, a reflection that is something that's nourishing for them that actually gives them fuel. So it's almost like a vision board. Or a little bit of a roadmap where they have to be to get one place now where they want to be, and you know, just drawing the end result of that, it actually unlocks the subconscious where people can actually make things happen faster because they're already seeing themselves in the image. And it's really magical. I get a lot of emails back and say, oh, the truth being true. And in a way, it's just, it's like a program. You know, people will see themselves in it, they'll make it happen themselves. I'm just kind of reflecting back what's alive in them. So, and, you know, I, I want to say one more thing. I didn't start out in this career this way. I uh, actually, I failed 12th grade computers and drafting, and I was turned down for art school three times. I was in a K-12 school with 300 kids, and even had my father from 6th to ninth grade or something, or 11th grade, back to back, in two classes in ninth and ninth grade. I was a definite political prisoner in school, and even there was no art offered after seventh grade. The only libraries you had were home ec and shop. So I ended up having to find my way through this, you know, in a way. And, and so that kind of leads to one of my core values in what I'm drawing here, and that's freedom. I was given a shitty set of, of options that I could have for my life that bound me a long time. And when I unlearned that influence, I was able to actually transform my life in a very different way. I like to offer that to others. So, you know, I was given, growing up in a, in a mountain town in eastern British Columbia, so it's a town, a logging town. So, I could be a lumberjack, I could go to university, or I could get a service job somewhere if I could find one. And those are the only three choices you're offered at that time. And none of them were really working for me. But, uh, you know, eventually, I found my way to here. And for what I was punished for in school now, I get flown around the world to do. <laughs> nice. So, I guess we can do a demonstration right now and start. So, I'm going to move you over to the over here. Now I, got, now, I got asked to do this about 10 days ago, and I, I, we talked about it, and so I said, I'm just going to wing it and have fun here. I'm a two-hand drawer, so I might have to pick the mic away a little bit here. 
Oh, I can do it the first time. Okay. So this is how I work. Put your hand on your heart. So I want you to feel your heart and breathe in that spot. And it's not a test, it's just a game. In this moment of your heart to you, if you felt completely free, you could be or do anything. What would that be for you right now? And what's it feeling for you? What do you love? What is it? The education of the art, the culture, and the absolute heart of the people. Okay, let's let's draw us in Italy here. You can relax. Thank you. So as I draw, there's I don't like to be preloaded with information. I just want to wing it as you go. Because I find I work better intuitively and spon spontaneously rather than, you know, think what I know about somebody. I think when we think we know somebody, we're not really seeing them. We're seeing our idea of them. So I like to keep it completely fresh and unexpected. And so I just draw. And every stroke that I do becomes. I like that. <laughs> and, you know, a different set of probabilities. And since we know that Miss Marge here is all about feminine radiance, we're going to capture that in this picture here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, boy. And see, I always have the monitor turned away from the model because their vulnerability makes the crowd happy. moment, young lady, your favorite color is what? Red. Right. Yeah. Whoa. There you go. <laughs> and, you know, so what I do is, it's like team of exercises, drawing visions for companies, for what they want to see or do. You know, it can be therapy because, you know, when you're pressed with someone, I don't, I really don't judge any content and all, at all. I like radical honesty about all things, so... No matter what's being, you know, being asked for, I'm happy with it, so long as I can put the energy of truth in it. Because sometimes people will say an answer just to say an answer, and it's in their head, and you can feel that, and you can feel that authentic, but if I can feel the answer, that's you. So, a little bit under here. You're a red or white wine drinker, or not at all? Red. Also, I can go by mob rules too, so if any of your, oh. of, of Margie's friends have something to add to this, I can stick it in there as well. Oh. So with the arts, what exactly is it for you to teach the arts, or to receive training, or to um, promote art awareness? What is it for you? For me, I think knowledge is absolute power. So the more knowledge that I have, I'm able to then share it at the right time. So it really is more for me first to understand. It. And then from there, at the right time, I can then share my knowledge with the opportunity that arises. But the number one would be for me to learn. Okay. So we're going to make this artsy. Italian, and also to express that it's for her. But I think what we want to see is our gift to give first to the world. And I think we, we were a better example by doing it for ourselves first. And sometimes we want to help people and everything else, but you know, if we're just doing it for others, we're not doing it for ourselves, I think we kind of get defeated and burnt out. Mm -hmm. 
Now, are you a, are you a, at all artistically inclined? Spreadsheets and make all those different amount of spreadsheets are to me. She wears it on okay, so it's all fashion and I assemble I assemble um the various pieces of wear. Okay. Jewel designs and I assemble them. Let's get that in there. And I don't 
draw very much here, so I just put in a few little lines, and your brain fills in the gaps.
to put people in a real positive frame uh, with laughter and joy. Why don't you go ahead and share some of the experiences that you've had? Sure, I can do that. I had an event uh, a couple of years ago with KPMG, the biggest county moving money around the firm. And they were working a new, a new client called Gold Corp. They're a big international gold mining company, and, and they had some offices in Vancouver. And so they brought me up to the Four Seasons in Whistler to, to draw for two days. But I was actually there to draw the meetings. And in, in the, uh, the uh, Gold Corp was going through a, a restructuring, and it wasn't a good scene around there. Everyone was miserable. Uh, and all the department heads were there in this one division called Technical Services. They were all hating each other, and as they were talking, I mean, meeting highly intuitive, I could feel the trespass over each person's territory and vibe, and, and they were just hating life. Okay. So, what I was doing, as I was listening to this, my job was to draw the meetings as they were talking. So this, one of, the, one, of the, one of the executives was talking about the expiration part. So he was explaining his role to everybody else, and I had no idea what was coming, but I was drawing out the meeting as they were talking. But what I also did is I was drawing cartoons of them. And as I was drawing them, they started to relax and connect with each other. And, and they started laughing. They stopped being defensive and fighting, and all of a sudden, the whole vibe of the meeting started changing. And I believe I got KPMG a good job of that. So I do them all together. In a rock truck, so that's all. Nice. 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 And I sit there. And, and so I'm going to be done for the day. I have to over. And as I was leaving, because I was, I was at KPMG's, um, they were different clients, so I was just their agent. So I was going back to their room, but the CEO of Gold Park was no, stop. He's coming with us for everything now. So they made sure that I came along for everything they were doing in Whistler. So I gave me next to him all night, we were talking, and, and it was a lot of fun. So a lot of great, a lot of connectivity was created you know, amongst his team. And usually a lot of my clients become friends. I, I have, like when I go to Shell, the CEO of, of uh, Petroleum, uh, the, the retail product, she hugs me when she sees me. Gold Gym brings me to their convention. I had one client hire me 20 years in a row for something. And then when I show up there, I got people waiting by the door to come see me. They've been planning this for years and years. Uh, <laughs> they go, I'm going to get this this time. And I, and I call caricature a gateway pose. You know, it leads to more and more posing. You know, that creativity opens up. I want to be this, I want to be that. And reflecting that back to people is really powerful. And I say, well, there's a place of freedom. No judgment in it. Everything's a total freestyle. Everything goes. It's fun. People then feel safe to be authentic and share. And that's, that's really what I do when I bring that to the table here. I have another picture. This one guy I'm going to show you here. This is like also the transformational part of what I like. My client is in Integrity Square. This guy, he's a, uh, a property, not a manager, but a, a property broker for this venture capital group. And he's got a reputation of being like a really tough New York guy. And, and they actually, I did a picture of him properly, but I need their titles for their, for their podcast. And they said, who that for But then I thought to sit by himself with me. And like everything he said was like full on New York tough guy. It was, it was fascinating to listen to him speak in the vernacular. And I got through that process of what he really wanted. You know, when he touched his heart, all of a sudden he softened. And he goes, you know, I want to just exude light and make clean water projects for kids in Africa. And I drew him like that. And I mean, he was fighting back in tears because that's what he really wanted to be, what he loved. Not just the mass of what he believed he was, but really what, what was his dream. A lot of people, we get ourselves in roles where we think we're stuck, but sometimes just seeing the possibility can be quite transformative when we move through things. It's all about how we really to see. And, and I know he's fighting back, you know, the, the, uh, the emotion now, but he's, you know, he's keeping it together, but I could feel it. And that's kind of what I do. It's and there's no rules, there's no um, agenda when I'm drawing people. It's literally what's alive in this moment, and let's just go for it. And it could be you know something just you know simple. Someone likes their sport, or it could be someone who wants to do an NGO, or someone who wants to you know, be a dancer, or you know it's unlimited. And that's 
kind of how it is. So I'm also willing, if people want, I can do another one or a couple more. People want to. Well, I saw your hand go right away, young lady. So. <laughs> Come on down. It's a Wacom. They're a company based out of Portland, Oregon, Vancouver, Washington, and they make, they're like the, the genesis of touch sensitive monitors. So, remember the original tablet PCs you saw in the early 2000s? Wacom's technology made it so you can use a pin on it and the pressure. So, um, I'm just going to one second here. Why more, adults or children? Um, I'm, I, I do 95% adult parties, but I'm, I'm very, I can meet anybody anywhere, so it's, it's pretty fine with me. But definitely, I mean, the lion's share of my work is is adult corporate. Um, it could be weddings, it could be, you know, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs sometimes, it could be, uh, when you name it, I've done it. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll one this one this one kid. I'll share you one quick story before I start your picture here. I was at this uh, this big contractor named they're, they're they're a big developer in Vancouver, and they had a family barbecue, and it was full of kids. It was really loud in there, and these two boys sat down, and one kid he had a face like this, like he this Maori kind of angry haka face all the time, and his little brother. And I couldn't hear, so I put them on fighting robots. And he goes, I hate this. And I go, okay. And I can see that he's not happy, so I go, I'm listening very carefully now. What do you want? He goes, I want to burn the world. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, you know, screw it. I want to burn the world sometimes. Let's draw it. Yeah. Oh. And, uh, and so as he's sitting in front of me, he goes, I want to burn the world. I want my face like this. That's fine with me. And I go, do you want fire shooting out your eyes? He goes, yes. Fire shooting out my eyes. I'm burning the world my face like this. And I go, how about fire shooting out your ears? Yes, my eyes and my ears and my face like this. And so I asked him, okay, how about fire shooting out your butt? <laughs> just, just my eyes. <laughs> and I didn't get the choice because you know, it's not a big deal to me. I could feel people in contraction around me watching this because I mean, everyone's first instinct, oh, you can't draw that. But you know, I don't know this kid's life. I don't know what his karma is. I don't know what his purpose is. Or he's hurting. I'm just listening. And so I did draw it. Um, so yeah, Here. I drew him like that. He was ready to roll his names on fire. And as he sees it, his energy just, he just relaxes, he softens up, and he's holding his face, he's trying to, he goes, this makes me a <laughs> But what was cool, his father, I just caught him perfectly, looked at me and he just goes, there's no else, thank you. And so I didn't make him wrong in it, I just listened to him and gave him what he wanted. And I think what we're heard, it just takes the, takes the charge away everything. And that's really important, so I'm working at trying to get that with people. I'm usually two handed artist, I'm out of my flow a little bit here. So. I'm going to start again. Yes. Be or do anything, what would that be for you? 
but we are going to turn Barry Tower in two weeks. So be sure that you go to the site, be sure that you register for your election. Also, tell your friends, get them to go to the site and register. We want everybody to be there and to enjoy. It is a palace. And yes, there'll be valet parking. The staff there is phenomenal, and it's going to be an experience each and every time. I will be interviewing for up and coming guest speaking spots. If you'd like to be considered, please come on and talk with me. Uh, we have, um, I'm also interested in referrals for this particular response. If you know people that you think have a serious message that are fun, that have something to really uh, bring to the table, to impact lives, you know, to put starch in their arch and kick in their giddy up and give it to us too. I mean, we've really got to have, we really want to help bring awareness, positiveness, and be uplifting to one and all. So with that in mind, it is not goodbye. We're gonna see you in two weeks at Turnberry Tower. And definitely, definitely, if you've got questions, reach out to me, reach out to Bruce, and thanks again. And again, we'll see you in two weeks. Bye-bye.